Did you know that in classic mobile game Jetpack Joyride, you can equip a hairstyle called Powered Up Hair? The description of the hair reads, we are not really sure what the power level of this hair is. It's probably a lot. So what is the cost of this funky hairstyle? Why it's 9,001 coins, which in case you didn't know, is over 9,000. Vegeta, what did you say his power level is? It's over 9,000! 9,000! Hello and welcome back to another episode of Video Game Easter Eggs, the series where we cover some of the best Easter eggs found in video games. As always, if you think you know of a video game Easter egg that I'm yet to cover, then let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to check it out. Anyway, without further delay, let's get started. Right, let's begin with a visit to the outrageous world of Postal 4. After finally leaving early access last month, Postal 4 was greeted with overwhelmingly negative reviews from media outlets. The thing is, this game was never going to please games journalists. It's important to understand that not every game has to be a 10 out of 10 thought-provoking masterpiece. Sometimes a game can just let you do crazy things and have fun whilst doing it. I mean, that doesn't excuse the bugs in Postal 4, of which there are a lot. But outlets like IGN were never going to praise Postal 4. It's not made for them. Anyway, let me climb off my soapbox and show you some of the cool Easter eggs that Postal 4 has to offer. Now, we have covered some Postal 4 Easter eggs before, with the most recent example being episode 50 of this series, where we found a cliff face shaped like a baby. Well, the first Postal 4 Easter egg for today's video references one of the best games ever made. At this location on the map, you can find this house. So this welcome mat is a reference to Sweet from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Now some of you may think that's a vague reference, but round the corner you can find some graffiti that says CJ was here which of course references Carl Johnson, the main character of San Andreas. Oh, and if you still need convincing, the graffiti is above a BMX bike, which CJ used to escape the ballers early on in the game. Next up, at this location on the map, if you perform some light parkour, you can reach a rooftop that's hiding a very strange find. So this makeshift sniper's nest is home to a sniper rifle and several jars of urine. This is a reference to the sniper from Team Fortress 2, who not only uses a sniper, I mean the clues in the name, but is also able to throw jars of his own urine at enemies. A similar easter egg could also be found in Valorant, which we featured all the way back in episode 25 of this series. The final Postal 4 easter egg, though I fully expect to find plenty more, can be found at the in-game phone shop. The games that are being played on the phones are Clash of Cocks, a reference to Clash of Clans, and Dongus, which is a nod to Among Us. Like I said, I fully expect to find more easter eggs in Postal 4, and if you found any of your own, then please let me know in the comments. Now, being a video game YouTuber, I like to think that I have my finger on the pulse when it comes to video game releases, especially games that are hiding easter eggs. That's why I'm surprised that I'd never heard of Retro Machina, a single player action and exploration game released in 2021. In the game you take control of a tiny robot who has the ability to hijack other machines that it can then use to do its bidding. As mentioned, the game is also home to tons of nods to popular culture, with the first referencing a film that we should all be familiar with by now. Early on in the game, you're required to power up an elevator to progress. The wattage required to power the elevator is a whopping 1.21 gigawatts, which is coincidentally the same wattage required to power the DeLorean from Back to the Future. That's not the only Back to the Future reference found in Retro Machina. In Atomic City, you can find this. Of course, it's the aforementioned DeLorean from Back to the Future. The final easter egg I found in Retro Machina can also be found in Atomic City.
So this groovy looking van is the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo. Much like Postal 4, I fully expect there to be more Easter eggs to find in this game. So if you know of any that I didn't share today, please let me know in the comments. Up next is Prop Night, a game where you have to disguise yourself as all manner of things whilst hiding from a scary looking killer. Oh, and when I say all manner of things, I really do mean all manner of things. In episode 80 of the Hidden Detail series, we even disguised ourselves as poop. Now, the first Easter egg from the Poo Disguise Simulator is a reference to a very popular movie. On the house map, you can find this. I'm guessing that all of you know what this axe stuck in the door is referencing, but for the seven of you who don't, this is a reference to this infamous scene from The Shining something which has been referenced a ton in video games before. Oh, and just briefly, something else that I noticed. On various maps, you can find several pair computers, an obvious reference to Apple and their computers. Now, you may recall that in episode 66 of this series, we made the surprising discovery that a couple of dog tags were changed in Dying Light 2. Originally, the dog tags read Chris Redfield and Leon Kennedy, stars of the Resident Evil series. However, they were changed shortly after release to Chris Bluefield and Leon Kennedy. Whilst it was never confirmed, I think the general opinion is that Capcom's lawyers made a couple of phone calls and um, <clears throat> politely asked the names to be changed. Well, the Capcom lawyers may want to get on the phone to the Prop Night team. One of the killers you can play as is Akasha, a creepy but kind of hot female vampire. Do you know who else is a creepy but kind of hot female vampire? Daniela Dimitrescu, one of Lady Dimitrescu's daughters from Resident Evil Village. Come on, I can't be the only one who sees this. I'm guessing it won't be long before the Capcom lawyers are once again picking up the phone. Oh, and you could also argue that the Banshee from Prop Night is very similar to Valak from the Conjuring series, but creepy nuns have been a thing for a while now, so I'm willing to overlook this one. Right, to end today's video, let's take a quick look at the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition. Marketing itself as an expanded reimagining of the original game, I'm actually surprised by the amount of new content in this deluxe edition. I have actually made a video covering the easter eggs in the original Stanley Parable, but despite only spending a short time with this new version, I may need to make a deluxe version of that video. Anyway, the only deluxe edition easter egg to feature in this video requires you to jump, something which you can't usually do in the Stanley Parable. To unlock the ability to jump, you need to first access the new content door, which can be done by completing a couple of the game's endings. As you explore the new content, you can enter the jump circle, which, surprise surprise, lets you jump. It's at this point you then need to begin a new game. When you start your new game, you should be able to jump whenever you like. Now, head to the factory area of the game, jump onto the boxes and land on the platform below. Head through the vent and follow the path to the right side of this room to find this. So far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. So far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. So far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun. So far off the beaten path. Yep, a Dark Souls reference in the Stanley Parable. To be fair, jumping is supposed to be impossible in the Stanley Parable, so referencing a game that to many has seemed impossible at times is pretty fitting. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, then leaving a like is really appreciated. If you are a fan of Easter eggs and secrets in video games, then perhaps consider subscribing as that's what this channel is all about. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.